A few days ago, I 100%ed Pikmin 4, and the game really impressed me, not only in its quality as a singular game, but also in how good of a follow-up it is to the other games in the series. From the very start, you could tell that one of the biggest differences between this game and the previous ones is Ochi. I think he is a genius inclusion to the Pikmin gameplay formula, because he contrasts excellently with the Pikmin as an alternate unit type that is strong and versatile, but singular, where the Pikmin are weak and specialized, but many. On top of this, he also serves as a successor to the secondary captains, which in previous games were all identical to each other in terms of ability and function. Now it matters which of the controllable characters you're using because they play differently. The player character can charge their Pikmin and throw them in a comparatively high arc, while Ochi can swim on the water's surface and rush. While Ochi is probably the biggest change, there are a lot more that have been made to the gameplay and level design like having the player gradually increase the maximum amount of Pikmin allowed on the field, only allowing three types of Pikmin on the field at once, and having multiple landing zones for each area. Possibly the best one, in my opinion, is how players find almost all Pikmin types before finding their respective onions. This gives almost every Pikmin type a sense of rareness at some point in the game, which I thought was really cool. Another thing that this does is avoid the feeling that certain types are only available way too late into the game, like in Pikmin 3. Also, because you will eventually find onions for all Pikmin types, you don't need to repeatedly visit the same caves over and over to farm onionless Pikmin like you did in Pikmin 2. Now that I've said a bit about the innovations of Pikmin 4 compared to others in the series, let's discuss how it handles following in the footsteps of its predecessors. While playing through the game, I kept on finding myself thinking, this game is an excellent sequel. Some sequels are way too similar to their predecessors, while only adding updated graphics and new versions of the same type of content. And others just cast certain aspects of the past games to the side, replacing them with new ones arbitrarily, sometimes losing what made the original as good as it was. Pikmin 4 avoids both of these mistakes, incorporating so many ideas and concepts from the past games in a highly coherent way. Just as an example, if you failed to collect enough ship parts in Pikmin 1, you would get the bad ending of the game, in which Olimar cannot escape the planet and gets carried to the Onion by the Pikmin, being absorbed into it and popping out again as some kind of strange Olimar looking seedling. This ending leaves the player with a lot of questions, but we don't see anything like this ever again in the series until now. Pikmin 4 takes this minor concept and transforms it into the Leaflings, which are lost space travelers that have been hybridized by an Onion and serve to challenge the player to various tasks that involve organizing and efficiency. Throughout the game you'll run into a transformed Olimar who will challenge you to Dandori battles. I thought this was so cool because we were Olimar in Pikmin 1, so we know firsthand how efficient he can be. Another example is the continuation of the process that started in Pikmin 2 and was very obvious in Pikmin 3, where controlling the Pikmin is easier and allows less room for error from the player. Some examples are the automatic lock-on as opposed to the free-range cursor, the game preventing the player from throwing more Pikmin than necessary when trying to carry something, Pikmin rejoining your party when you approach them as opposed to having to physically touch them like in previous games, and the many different tools and upgrades you can buy from the lab. One last example I'll point out is Pikmin 4's enemy roster. As a longtime fan of the series, it was really nice to rediscover enemies that were missing from the series for a long time, like the Smoky Prog and Armored Cannon Beetle, which have not been seen since Pikmin 1 and the Man at Legs, which only appeared in Pikmin 2. Now, admittedly, Pikmin 4 is not better than every game in the series in every way, or anything like that. There were, of course, some things in the game that I didn't like, but in a lot of ways, this feels like it could be the definitive Pikmin game. Obviously, something like that will come down to everyone's individual opinion. Anyway, back when Pikmin 3 was about to come out in 2013, I was very, very excited for it, but I ended up being pretty disappointed by that game. I just personally didn't like it that much. Quite the opposite happened here. When I heard Pikmin 4 had been announced, I kept my expectations in check, but ended up being very pleasantly surprised by it. So those are just some of my thoughts on the game and some of my experiences with it. Feel free to agree or disagree with me in the comments below. Anyway, thanks for watching.